Hey everybody, Charles Judd here with Kevin Wallace Training. If you're interested in CCNA security, one thing you need to be familiar with is Cisco's Adaptive Security Device Manager software, also known as ASDM. ASDM is a GUI-based tool that allows for easy configuration of firewalls. I'm going to show you today how to set up a clientless SSL VPN using Cisco's ASDM software. So let's take a look. Here's a look at ASDM, which I'm already signed into, and under the Remote Access VPN area, we can see the Clientless VPN Access Tree, and we're going to go through three basic steps to configure a Clientless SSL VPN, creating a connection profile, creating a group policy, and creating a user account for the VPN. Now, keep in mind that these steps can be performed in any order that you want. This setup is just my own preferred order that I'll use here. So first, let's go to the group policies area and create a new group policy. You can see the option to view or edit existing policies is also available. Here is the system default policy, and you can see the tunneling protocols used. Ike version 1 and 2, clientless SSL, and L2TP IPsec. You can also see connection profiles, so this is a helpful place for finding out information about the VPN setup in the case of an existing connection or policy. Instead of the default policy, we're going to add a new one, and we'll call this policy Remote Users. We can create a login banner visible to remote users, so we'll create a simple version of that. And for the tunneling protocol, we only want to enable clientless SSL VPN. Web ACLs are what we use to control access inside the clientless SSL VPN. We can choose Manage, and from here we can add specific places where users are allowed. Remember that you need to be as specific as possible when configuring here. As with all ACLs, web ACLs have an implicit deny at the bottom. Now we can go in and configure bookmarks for our remote users. And just like browser bookmarks, these are simply shortcuts to important or commonly used resources. Let's name the list Remote Bookmarks. And let's add a bookmark titled Accounting Folders, pointed to 100. We'll add just a couple more for testing's sake. Uh, internal server, 192.168.1.5, and FTP access at 10.1.1.50. And that's all we'll configure for this simple group policy. We'll choose OK, and then we have to choose Apply as well to make sure the settings are applied. Very important to remember that step. So now that we've added a group policy, let's set up a connection profile. In the same clientless SSL VPN section, we can choose the connection profiles option. And one of the first things you see is a device certificate. You can use an actual certificate from a trusted certificate authority, or you can use a self-signed certificate, which in this example is what we'll do. Click on manage and then add, and you need to give the trust point a name. And I'll just leave the default name here, that'll be fine. In the following section, the top option would be used for importing a CA file that we've already obtained. So we want to choose the second option to add a new self-signed certificate. We now want to create a new key pair for this certificate. We can use a default name or we can rename that. I'll use the name VPN keys and I'll use the 2048 bit size. And now our key pair has been created. The final option we want to choose is the box generate self-signed certificate. When we choose Add Certificate, we get the Enrollment Succeeded message, which means we've successfully created a self-signed certificate. Now you see our newly created certificate is available in this Specified Device Certificate window, so we can simply choose that one and click OK. We may also want to specify the port over which users can connect. The default here is 443, so we're just going to leave that in place. And notice the option that's already chosen here. Enable inbound VPN sessions to bypass interface access lists. This is essentially telling the ASA that traffic coming through the VPN is trusted. If you uncheck this box, then you have to specifically allow traffic from the VPN in the interface access list. We are going to trust our VPN traffic, so we'll leave that alone. Now we want to add a new connection profile. We can do that near the bottom with the Add option, and we'll name the profile Remote Users. The authentication method will be AAA, and we'll use the local option here. Now, if we had a Radius or a TACAX Plus server available and set up with a user database, these would certainly be valid options here as well. But in this case, we're going to use local authentication. 
If we have a server providing DNS services in the network, we can point to that here. And then we'll choose our group policy, which is the one that we already created named Remote Users. Let's expand the advanced settings and we'll get a warning about the DNS server not being defined. Now in a production network, you want to make sure this is corrected so that fully qualified domain names would work from the portal. But here though, in this lab example, it's okay to ignore that message. And now the relevant section here is group URLs. As you can see, this allows you to set the specific connection profile being used during connection. Without this in place, when a VPN user tries to connect to the interface IP address of the ASA, they would be presented with a choice. They would be presented with a list of profiles that they could use. So if you have multiple profiles in place, this is a potential problem because a user can make an incorrect selection, misconfigure their VPN session, and so it's ideal when there are multiple connection profiles in place to set a group URL. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll use HTTPS 10.1.1.10 forward slash remote users. And of course, 10.1.1.10 is the outside IP address of this ASA firewall. And now the final step will be to create a user for the connection. On the left, you can see the section AAA local users. And we want to choose the local user submenu and then choose add. We'll create a user and I'll just make one for myself and I'll use the password Cisco, all lowercase. And now notice that we have access restriction options, the default being full access with a chosen privilege level. Now in most cases, you want to choose the last option, which is no ASCM, SSH, Telnet, or console access. We don't want our VPN users to have any access into the configuration of the ASA. Under the VPN policy, there are many, many more options. You can choose the group policy, the allowed tunneling protocols, you can choose specific connection profiles, you can set access hours, you can even set aside dedicated IP addresses for users. And by default, all of these are set to inherit, which means they inherit the settings from the group profile that we previously set up. So this is fine for us in this case. Click OK and apply to send the configuration over the last thing that's important is you want to make sure you enable the interfaces for the clientless SSL VPN access. You also want to make sure that your new connection profile is enabled as well.